Welcome back everyone. So as you know, we've been getting the kids and the parents back on track when it comes to back to school. And we're going to talk about math skills, some pretty startling numbers here. Because of COVID, the average K through 12 student is about five months behind in math. That is more than half a grade level. You can't make that up without a little extra work. And about one in three adults nationwide haven't mastered even fourth grade math, which can make parents feel less confident, helpless when trying to help their kids catch up. Joining me now, Laura Overdeck with what's called the Bedtime Math Foundation to talk about how we can help our kids get back on track. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. All right, so what's the concept behind bedtime math? I, I picture us in the bed and we're just about to read a book and I'm like, no, let's do some math. <laughs> well, that's exactly right. Um, we really look at reading and math very differently in this country. We all know to read a bedtime story, but when it comes to math, when do we do that? So I founded Bedtime Math 10 years ago to give parents fun math questions to do with their kids at night. And the research has shown that's very powerful. But now we're at a moment in time where We've got to look at how far kids are behind in school. And the problem is, if you survey parents, they think they're on track. The majority of parents think their kids are on grade level, and it's often not true. So our new campaign, Be Part of the Equation, is all about reaching out to parents about that. You know, this. I used to be a volunteer coordinator in a school, and, and I find that sometimes parents aren't as confident as they need to be when it comes to helping their kids out. And as we just talked about those numbers, especially in math, how can we help to kind of raise their confidence so that they can sit hand in hand with their child? You know, it's very true that adults are often not comfortable. This is why we see that restaurants now calculate the tip. Mm like to point out that's a fourth grade math skill and everybody graduates from elementary school. We know adults can do this. It's just anxiety and a mental block. And it's critical that parents shake that because you're the role model for your kid. When parents say, oh, I'm not so good at math or don't worry, you won't need that in real life. Like that all has to stop <laughs> because we're at a real crisis point. Let's kind of walk this through. So, you know, like I said, we lay in the bed, usually we'll go through a book. Um, do you suggest having maybe like a bedtime notebook that you have equations in there? Or how do you actually get these questions and the answers and, and what does this look like in practice? So that's just one of the many resources we're offering, but the way it works is the parent is can see a quick story and they say it to their child. And we actually encourage no notebooks or pencils because it's all about being nimble in your thinking, being able to think on your feet and do the mental math. And it's set up so that's doable because that's the way math is in real life. I mean, we don't notice, but we're doing math on the fly all the time. When you're you know, getting a whole meal ready at once or deciding whether Netflix annual subscription is better than the monthly, <laughs> you know, we're constantly using it and, and you, we want our kids to be prepared for that adult life. Okay, quickly, um, we have about 30 seconds left. What kind of questions should we be asking our kids and also the teachers? Because sometimes I feel like there's a disconnect there where you think your kid, like you, you said it, you know, you think your kids are doing okay and in the end, they're really not. Well, I think one of the biggest things we have to change in our mindset is how we think about assessing and measuring our kids. When you go to the pediatrician, you want to know everything about your child's health and diagnose it and heal it. Math health is the same way. So be part of the equation.org. If you go there, it, it guides parents on how to talk to their teacher about where their child really is and perhaps even talk to the school and really push for change. All right, Laura, thank you for the work that you're doing. I really encourage parents to go to that website because I'm telling you, it's hard. I mean, it starts in third and fourth grade. You have to remember those things that you knew a long time ago. So get some help and make sure that we are helping our kids reach those goals. Thank That's you. That's right. Thank you. And we'll be right back after the break.